Paper clutter. Now, I'm sure you have piles of paper hanging out on your desk, your kitchen counters, maybe even in your bedroom. So, what do you do about all those papers? Do you just kind of like let them sit or do you actually have a plan for your papers? In this video, I'm going to share how to set up a filing system that will actually work for you. Hey there, I'm Jessica, The Organized Mama. I'm family organizing expert that helps you with using tips, tricks, and tutorials the entire family can do. There are three different options when it comes to filing papers. There is the traditional route, which is using a filing cabinet. Then there's also two alternatives that might also work for you in your home. The first one is using magazine holders on your desk or on shelves as your filing system. And the second is using a filing box to file all of your things. Okay, so let's break these three things down in this video. The very first one is a filing cabinet, and I like filing cabinets if you can keep up with it. So buying a large giant filing cabinet might not be the best option for you, or even like building them into your home. We had a client that built in these large filing cabinets, wasn't able to keep up with it because there were too many categories files, all of that in her filing cabinet. So instead we created a little bit of a different system. So what I recommend is looking at if you can keep up with a filing cabinet system, that means taking your paper and putting it in the file that it actually belongs in. If this is something you can do, then let's talk about how to do that. Okay, the first step you need is you might need some sort of visual in order to keep your filing cabinet organized. For me, I like color coding or grouping things by category. Then make an index for everything that's inside your drawer. Keep that in the very front of your filing cabinet so that you know what is inside. This is going to help you immensely when you are looking to see what to file. Also, if you do just happen to have a large filing cabinet, keeping an index will help you realize what goes where. You can even stick the index on the outside of the filing cabinet, use like a magnet to hold it in place. You also need a process for decluttering unwanted papers. So for me, we keep all of our receipts for the year in a file and each month has its own file. So it's June right now. So I pull out our June receipts folder. I shred all of the receipts from last year and then put in new receipts from June this year in our June file. This is a system for decluttering our unwanted papers. Another way to do that is to set a time when you can go through your files each year to declutter any unwanted papers. Also, where do your papers go before they get filed? Because obviously they go somewhere. So use that as kind of like a system to figure out if you actually need to keep it or not. I like using either a tray or a magazine holder to hold those particular items on a desk. That way you make sure that everything gets filed and put away where it needs to go. Then with the filing cabinet, make sure that it's easy to use. When you know it's easy to use, you will keep up with it. So speaking of easy to use, another easy to use method is to use magazine holders. You can give each magazine holder a specific category or maybe a specific family member. We've done it um, multiple ways for different people. It just depends on what works for you and how you can drop your items into the magazine holder to keep them organized. Also with this system, you do need to make sure that you have a way to declutter unwanted papers. So maybe once a month, you go through each magazine holder and you decide you know, what you need to keep and what you don't. And then you can shred, recycle, do whatever you have to do with those papers that you don't need anymore. Make sure you label all of the magazine holders so you know what goes inside. For us, I keep it easy by doing categories. So we have medical all in one, I have school in another, we have receipts 
in one, coupons in another. And this way, it's easy to look, pull out what you need and dot, dump in the papers that you have so that you don't have the piles lying all over the house. Okay, so then the last way that you can get your papers organized is using a box filing system. And this is literally a box that holds your files. It just stays on your desk, making it easy for you to drop in um, all of your papers or different things that you might need to hold on to. The reason why I like, like the box system, it is small, which means you have to be very conscious of what papers you're holding on to and what you're getting rid of. And it's easy to use because it's just right there. You can just drop it in, which is why I equate it to the magazine holder. It's very similar in the methodology to use. You just drop the papers in and you're good to go. If you use the box system, set it up similar that you would to a filing system. Make sure it is um, easy to use. Everything is categorized and that you have you know, a way to declutter the paper. Down below where you're watching this video, I have categories for your home filing system. These are all the categories that we have used in order to create effective home filing systems, which is why I think it's going to benefit you if you are struggling with the paper clutter. The reason why I gave you three different options is so that you can find an option that works best for you. Not everything is going to work for everyone. So find something that you can keep up with. If you can keep up with the paper clutter, then that works for you and you need to keep doing it. Then stop listening to all the other noise, even me, stop it, and just keep doing what you're doing in order to keep the paper clutter at bay. Down below, I have a lot more paper clutter tips that you can read so that you can limit the amount of paper piles you have in your home. Love what you see? Don't forget to subscribe. New videos every Wednesday.